Hey y'all, Shades Actual. Uh, finally doing a review, seeming like a long time in the coming of the Rugged Razor 556, what was called a dedicated 556 can. Um, as you all know, there's been a lot of controversy about this. This here uh, suppressor. So I'm going to just give my experience and try to be unbiased because there seems to have been a lot of biased reviews on YouTube about this and just some information that just was honestly shilling for them. I'm guessing they got sent these suppressors and uh, I'm just going to give my honest review of it. I'm not going to like bash rugged for certain things. I'm not going to praise them for certain things. I'm just going to lay it all out with it. Um, as you may notice, I did get my razor cut by Echo uh, Machining. They did an awesome job, and I will go into why I did that a little bit later in the video. But just know that they didn't affect anything from the baffle stack, and they really didn't take any from the blast chamber. If anything, they might have added a little bit to the blast chamber, which... Honestly, it might be beneficial to this whole uh, suppressor as a whole, but just know going forward that that is, I did that myself. That's not how this came from uh, Rugged. It actually came with their mount, their uh, proprietary mount, which I guess will just be a start. So their mount is like the rum, but uh, it's separate from the rum Rugged universal mount that they sell online because that one's titanium and that one's lighter than the one that they put on their cans so uh some people i've seen when i've talked about this saying like oh the rugged mount is just so much lighter the mount that you can buy that's not on these cans is indeed lighter but the ones on this can aren't that light and as you can see i have chemo on here so Rugged states that their can is 13.4 ounces, and that's pretty much right around what it was when I weighed it when I first got it. After doing the cut and all this added and adding the chemo, I'm at 15 ounces exactly, uh, plus a little bit from the shooting that I've done. So going from 13.4 to 15 ounces is a 12% increase in mass, which honestly isn't that much considering how heavy chemo is. And then going into it, some people will say, oh, well, they provide you with the M2 brake or whatever it is, which is super lightweight. That brake's cool and all if you wanted to direct thread your can essentially and never shoot it unsuppressed. And I occasionally do shoot unsuppressed. Um, but if that's Rugged's logic with giving you the M2 which, in my opinion, I think that the M2 is just a way for them to cheap out to not give you a good muzzle device so that you spend more money on a muzzle device. But if they wanted to cheap out, they might as well have just given you a direct thread option. Um, but then you'd have to, which they're starting to do now, then you'd have to buy the rugged mount on top of their brake and then, you know, all this sort of stuff, which I'll continue going into. So... I think that their mounting system honestly is trash. I tried to get mine to work. I One of the reasons actually when I sent mine to uh, Echo is that to get my rugged mount on fully, I had to use pliers essentially or like vice grips and I fucked up the material on the bottom and uh, it was just getting annoying. So I run, let me see if I can get my rifle really quickly. So I run a T-Rex Arms light bar on mine. And when you use the rugged mount, you like essentially screw it on, which isn't hard to do with this. So you screw it on and then you have to yank on the collar. Well, to get the collar fully tight, it's impossible to do with this light bar. It's just like you have to use some sort of tool and you can't do it by hand. And that's one of the reasons I switched to chemo because I just like how everything looks running with this light and the light bar on my rifle. Um, so that was another reason why I got it cut because 
using their mount, it made it impossible to put on that. Um, but yeah, their, their, their mount's just impossible to put on properly from the factory and it was gritty and they're like, oh, it takes time to break in. And I, I get that, but I played with it for a whole night, just screwing it off and on and it never got looser. Uh, it never got fully tightened on. It didn't walk off on me. I'll give it that. It never walked off on me when I had it and I was shooting it, but it's just kind of not the business in the mount department. Okay, so the next thing is, um, I guess I kind of talked about it already, but I'll just hit on this debacle a little bit. When I first bought the can, I saw the cool ass video that they did with the dog. And this was before when they were taking pre-orders on Silencer Shop. Um, they said it was a 556 dedicated can. Um, they were kind of ambiguous about how it was 556 dedicated. And I thought that meant that it had 556 baffles or smaller diameter baffles. And they were kind of talking about low back pressure. So I thought, okay, maybe it's just a little bit bigger diameter than 223. Um, and that wasn't the case. They were ambiguous until somebody, uh, I can't remember who, maybe he'll comment on this post or this video showed that these are the exact same cans as, or baffles as the rugged 762, the rugged razor, the full size razor. Um, they're the same exact baffle sizes. The only thing that's different is, is that in the 762, you get an extra baffle and you get a different uh, end cap, which this is apparently, let me see if I can get this on focus. This is a 5.56 end cap, but it's not really a 5.56 end cap. And you can like drop 7.62 projectiles through it. So that was another blunderbuss. But uh, so when they found out, when I found out that it was 7.62 baffles, I called them up and talked about my concerns. I said like, hey, this kind of seems fishy. Um, you guys weren't really forthright in talking about how the camp was designed and what was different about it. Cause honestly, there was absolutely nothing different about it between the 762 besides the missing a baffle. Um, which is why I think that this can should be called the Razor 762K. Um, I think that's a much more appropriate title for the can uh, name, and it's a lot less misleading. Uh, I tried to talk to them about it, and I said, hey, like, this is kind of misleading advertising. Uh, like, I, I don't know. I basically wanted them to pay for my tax stamp or just, like, refund me the money, and I'd send them the can back. They weren't really about it, so I was going to sell it back to or send it back to Silencer Shop but they said, hey, we have to do a restocking fee, which I agree to and like the contract with them when you buy it. So I understood it. So I kind of weighed my options and I figured I'd just do a review on the can completely and let the world know to not make the mistake of buying this can without the information I'm putting forth. So I'm gonna talk about really quickly what have I've heard on the internet. And so one thing I've heard on the internet is you see this can compared to or competing with a very, very well-known military suppressor. And someone saying that, I'm not going to say who, but they said, hey, this can is better for first-time buyers of suppressors. And I think that's absolutely just a complete farce, not only because of the misrepresentation by Rugged, but also it's just not really a dedicated 556 five, can and that's what it's portrayed as. So if they had talked about it as this is a 762K and you can shoot 556 five, out of it as well as 762 and a whole bunch of other um, rounds, I would say, you know what? Sure, maybe you can say that that is a good first time can. But then I go back to thinking about this and saying, this collar is, or their collar, the rum mount is kind of a pain in the ass to put on. And as a first time user, it's not really like, kiss it's not keeping it simple stupid because you get screwed on and then you have to get it all the way on and you can't you don't really know if the no-go or go sign is like 
properly covered because the way you tilt the rifle, you can see no go or go. So it's like, it's kind of that no go go doesn't really make sense and doesn't really work in my opinion. I guess if you look at it properly from the same angle at the same time with the same amount of sunlight, like it might work, but I just don't think that that is a good can for a beginner. I think there's plenty of other good cans and I'm not going to like name any names, but I'll, I'm not going to name any names. I'm just going to be talking about the rugged, rugged razor right now. Um, so the next thing is, is Pew Science did a review of it and basically showed that this is probably the worst 556 dedicated can conceived pretty much in the testing. I think there's a few, like one or two other ones, but no can is lower than this that is made, air quotes, made for 556. So yeah, take that what it is. And in my personal opinion, it sounds trash. It, it just doesn't sound good. It's not trash. Um, it's not great. That's for sure. Um, my, any other, I think five, five, six, whether it be a full size can or a K can, as long as it has like semi smaller than 308 baffles sounds way better. Um, and there's way less flash coming out the front with this thing. I think you can see in my video with me shooting it during the day, you can see flash just coming out the front, like fireballs coming out the front in daylight. Um, so this kind of should be a telltale sign of what night vision use would be like or shooting at night. I can't shoot this at night at the same place I've been shooting because I moved from that house to my new house. So once I find a place where I can shoot at night outside, I'm going to just mag dump the shit out of this thing and show all the fireballs coming out without the night, the, uh, the flash hider cap. So that also brings me to the thing about price. So these things regularly go for $600 and sometimes you can get the rebate and the rebate's cool, but they really need to just be giving you a flash hider end cap and a flash hider muzzle device or a muzzle brake right out the box with rugged. I think that would make it an okay deal if they didn't misrepresent the can. Um, I think that would make this an okay can to shoot um, and like to stomach the price. But for $600, how you get it makes no sense because you're going to have to go out and buy a proper muzzle device from them, which is like about a hundred dollars. And then you're going to need to buy the flash hider end cap, which again is another hundred dollars. So to get a decent can that's functioning subpar to every other five, five, six can, you have to spend another $200 at rugged. So that's essentially making this an $800 can. And for $800, there's just so many more cans, either plus or minus a few hundred dollars that you could get for your 556 rifle. Um, so then they talk about how this is low back pressure. I have a T2, which is supposed to be notoriously bad with back pressure. And I can't really tell a difference between shooting my T2 and this on my 11 and a half. Like in regards to back pressure, I still get gas blown back in my face. Um, you know, I, I'm one of those people who gas doesn't really bother me. I guess it's just my shooting style. I shoot more upright, but um, yeah, I just don't think that it really has any, there's no way to measure the back pressure, I guess, scientifically or none that they've done. So it's just kind of like a hearsay on Rugged's part and every other company, honestly. But in my opinion, this doesn't have less back pressure than another. Like it might have a, I should take that back. It probably does have a little bit less back pressure than 5.56 five, scans like my T2. It's just not noticeable to me. So I'll leave that, leave it at that. Um, yeah. So would I buy this can again? Absolutely not. Um, I wouldn't buy this can unless Rugged started advertising it as the Rugged Razor 762K. I think that's a lot more fair of a title than maybe I would buy it. Um, I'd possibly buy it again, but as the Rugged Razor 556, 
no, I would not buy this can again. Um, I would only, um, let's see. No, I wouldn't buy it. And I hope on the Gen 2, they either call it the rugged Razor 762K or they change the baffle design because that's not, you could say it's a dedicated 5.56 can, sure, but to the public size, I feel like it's absolutely not. Um, with that, I'm going to say that if you've made it this far in the video and you have either a 6.5 Grendel AR upper, a 300 Blackout AR upper, um, let me think, a six millimeter arc upper that you want to send to me and I will shoot it out of this can just to see if it can handle it and not blow up. Uh, I will do it and I'll take videos of it so that people can see that this isn't a dedicated 5.56 can. Like you can probably, you can 100% shoot everything that you can shoot out of a rugged 7.62 razor out of this. It's built the same exact way. So if you send me either a 300 blackout, 6.5 Grendel, 6 millimeter arc, or anything else that will fit under a, um, a 308 uh, diameter, I think it's 0 0.60 or 0 0.360, yeah, uh, diameter bullet, I will shoot it and test it, and then I will send you your upper back, even plus points if it has a 308 muzzle device screwed onto it that is in chemo. That is kind of also helpful. If not, I'll buy a chemo um, upper. I would do it myself and buy all these different uppers, but I just bought a house and I am not broke, but I am not balling on. I am balling on a budget. So, yep, if you've made it this far, just like down or like the video, put a comment so that people can see this, send it to your friends and to your family who are thinking about buying this um, just so they have more information, I guess before making the purchase and yeah. So, and if Rugged wants to contact me, feel free or anyone wants to contact me, contact me on either Instagram, Reddit, and I will respond back to your DMs uh, in person. All right, thanks you guys.